Hello, welcome to Tech Lab. I'm Mr. Crowley, and today we're gonna be building some boats. Super excited. We're gonna be looking at some aluminum foil boats, and we're gonna see how much weight can your boat hold. Let's check it out. Welcome back. And we're gonna be building boats today out of this super cool material, aluminum foil. It's awesome, not just for cooking anymore. Before we jump into building our boats, let's get some boat building vocabulary so we can understand the science behind how our boats are able to float and carry all that weight. So the first word we're looking at today is the word buoyancy. And buoyancy is a force, which if you recall from our airplane videos, We've been talking a lot about the force. Buoyancy is a force that makes an object rise or float. So a buoyant force is what lifts you up if you're floating in the water. Buoyancy, fun fact, comes from the Spanish word for float, boyar. And the thing that's fascinating about buoyancy is that it's impacted by the density of the liquid, so if we're comparing it to water, versus the density of the object that we're floating in. Fascinating, isn't it? So our second word then must be the word density. And density is how much space an object takes up in relation to the amount of matter or stuff that is in an object. How much space the matter of an object takes up. It's also known as the amount of mass per unit of volume. So when you think about how big a certain unit of volume is, how much matter can we squeeze in there? Another word we're gonna need is mass. And mass is the amount of matter in an object. How much stuff makes that object up. Oftentimes when we think about mass, we might measure it in grams or think about it in terms of how much weight something has. But mass and weight are similar, but a little bit different. So weight is how heavy something is compared to the gravity of wherever you're measuring it. So for example, on Earth, I weigh 210 pounds. I know, it's a shocker, probably too much coffee. But on the moon, because the moon has less gravity than Earth, I would weigh only one sixth of that, which would be 35 pounds, or about as much as a precare. So as I was researching for this video, I was wondering how do scientists measure mass in outer space? Because if we're using scales to measure our mass, that wouldn't work without gravity. There's a really fascinating video I found and I linked it below that talks about how when you're in zero G or microgravity, they can use springs to, to find the mass of an object or a person. Fascinating stuff, check it out. All right, and then last we have volume. Volume is the amount of space a liquid, solid, or gas occupies. So volume is how much space it takes up. The volume of this glass is approximately 16 ounces. That's how much water is inside the space this glass occupies. So let's talk about buoyancy again. Let's get back to our buoyant force. So let's compare the buoyancy of this marble to the buoyancy of this cork. Now, before I put them in, let's weigh them. So I have my scale and I'm gonna put it in this little tin so I don't lose them, because that's helpful. So I'm gonna first find the mass of both objects, of the cork and the mass of the marble. So to find the mass of the marble, I'm gonna put it on the scale, and this scale will measure in grams. My marble weighs about three grams, awesome. So I'm gonna remove the marble, my scale's back to zero, and our cork, here's our cork. The cork weighs, Three grams. So the mass of our marble and cork is the same. So the marble and the cork have the same amount of mass. That also means they have the same amount of weight. So now comes the question of will they float or not? And to find out if they float, we have to think about the density of an object. So the marble has the same mass as the cork, but it is more dense because it occupies less space. 
So that same amount of stuff is squeezed into our marble. So it's more compact or more dense. Where the cork has the same weight and the same mass as our marble, but occupies a larger space. The volume of our cork is bigger than the volume of our marble. So now let's put them in water. So first, we can take our marble. If I drop this guy in, he sinks right to the bottom. And there's our marble hanging out down there. And now it's time for our cork. So the buoyant force of the water, when I put the cork in, let's see what happens. So our cork is able to float because it occupies more volume. It's less dense than the marble, which has sunk. All right, awesome friends. Buoyancy helps us understand if things will float or sink. And that's all dependent upon the density of the object, how much mass it takes per volume. Awesome. So now that we have an understanding of our buoyancy, mass, density, weight, and volume, now it's time for you to build your boat and see how much weight you can carry on those high seas. All right, friends, let's build. Today, we're gonna need a few supplies for our aluminum foil boat. Obviously, the first thing we need is aluminum foil. Very helpful for cooking, also helpful for creating. So for our aluminum foil, I wanna measure out a piece that is six inches by six inches square. To do that, I wanna grab my ruler. I like doing it this way because if you're doing more than one, it gives you a chance to have multiple tests of your boat design. And it also means that you need to have less weight to test your design overall. Perfect. So I have a, two squares, six inches by six inches. With aluminum foil, you can rip off the sheets using the serrated inside edge, or you can cut them as long as you cut carefully. You don't wanna rip the foil because those rips are hard to replace and any holes in your foil will definitely have a negative impact on your boat. All right, there's my foil. And bada bing, bada boom. There are many parts of a boat. In this case, we're building the part of the boat that will sit in the water. That is called a hull. The hull of the boat can come in many different shapes and sizes, just like a car can come in many different shapes and sizes, or should I say a vehicle. For example, a sports car can be really fast on the road and fun to drive, but your sports car isn't gonna carry much weight or carry many things with it. Where a tractor trailer is gonna be much bigger and be able to carry all those things we need, might not be as fast though, or as aerodynamic as it goes through the air. So our boats need to be hydrodynamic, meaning they can go through the water pretty easily. In this case, we're building a boat that can carry the most weight. So I want a boat that's got a lot of volume and a lot of weight capacity. Instead of a sports car, think about a tractor trailer, something with a lot of capacity to carry things. So I'm gonna build more like a rectangular prism than I might build like a speedy looking boat. To do that, I'm gonna start with my outside edges I'm gonna fold these corners in. And my goal here is to reinforce or make my outside edges stronger. If you've been with us for a while, you know that this is really important to build structural integrity. Structural integrity helps us engineer really strong designs that can withstand different forces acting upon them. In this case, the force of gravity pulling the weight of the marbles down and the buoyant force of the water holding the weight of our boat up. So I've got my outside edges creased. Now to build my corners, I'm gonna put my finger here in the inside edge. And I'm gonna kind of fold and crunch and fold and crunch until I've got a little bit of a crease in there. So if you look at this carefully, you can kind of see how I folded that up like so, and then I creased it around the front. All right, so I've got one done, let's do another. So I'm gonna poke my finger in Grab the outside edges like this, crease, crease, crease until the two sides come together and then fold that triangle. And you wanna make sure you have a really tight fold in there because you don't want water getting in your boat. It'll sink it before you even have a chance to begin. Let's try another corner there. So now, 
now I have a very simple yet cute little boat that I have designed. You can see my folds there. I'm gonna be careful with that. You also make sure that the edges of your boat are pretty uniform the whole way around. Wherever your lowest spot is, that will be the first spot that water comes in. And once a little bit of water comes in, the boat itself will start to fail, which can be a good thing because we're testing to see the amount of weight your boat can carry. We want to find out and push our designs to the very edge of the limit of failure. We have our boat, it's beautiful. Now we need some water. For the water, I am using a Tupperware container. You can use a sink first. Let's put our boat in and see how she floats. It's looking pretty good. Got my boat floating in there. And now let's add some weight. So for my weights, I am using marbles again. We wanna start putting our marbles. You can put some right in the middle or you can try and balance your marbles out. If all of our marbles are on one side, our boat will start to tip down to that one side and then it won't be balanced and the one side that becomes lower will then sink. So as my marbles are going, I've got one marble. We wanna start spreading this out. Oh, that's two. If you've ever been in a small boat, like a canoe, you know that sometimes you have to put the weight in very carefully because it can be tippy at first. Oh, oh, oh. Now remember, we know that one marble by itself sinks because it is too dense. So our boat has to displace more volume to provide greater buoyancy so it's able to float while carrying all the weight of those other, of all the marbles, the payload of our boat for its cargo. It's getting close. she goes like buried treasure all right so now that our boat has sank to the bottom of our bucket we know we've tested to the point of failure and we can count the number of marbles that are in our boat all right friends so my boat had a mass of Looks like two grams, but was able to carry one hundred and twelve, one hundred eleven grams of marbles. So my boat was able to carry one hundred eleven grams of marbles. Now we're measuring the weight of the marbles. I would love to hear how much weight your boat can carry. If you don't have a scale, you can just count and say how many marbles did it carry? The number of marbles I had is one, two, three, 30, 31. 31 marbles! I'll take that. That's a good first design. So our challenge today then is to see how much weight can your boat carry Once you conquer that, what's a different hull shape you could try? So this hull shape might be a little more fast and speedy, like a canoe. How much weight can that carry? What could you design? Our final challenge is, can you add some propulsion or way for your boat to move? Could you use rubber bands to help your boat travel through the water? Awesome friends, I hope you enjoyed building some aluminum foil boats with us today. If you had a good time, please give us a thumbs up. If you want to be here for our next challenge and our next lesson, hit the subscribe button. And until then, full steam ahead.